on this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. Snap adds voice search, Bitmoji games, a new nav bar, and bite-sized minis geared towards hope. The head of Google Ads is now the head of Google Search. Greg says it's like hiring your coach as your GM, and I don't know what that means. <laughs> Shep swaps out her two-hour German workout videos for a new take on Arm Day, and it's easy as pie. Greg tries to save the children from the evil overlord, Custodio. <laughs> and Jess Kramer started a new stock segment, dropped nothing but winners, lions and tigers and swine and bulls and bears, oh my. All on today's show. Marketing O'Clock is your weekly dose of digital marketing news, a proud part of the Search Engine Journal Podcast Network. We record every week from the Cypress North Studios located in beautiful Buffalo, New York. Tune in to our critically acclaimed Famous Friday News Show for insights, updates, rants, and much more as we cover the full gamut of digital marketing for you. If you want to follow along, just check out our show notes or head over to marketingoclock.com for all of the links from today's articles. And please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Hey there, I'm Christine Zernheld. AKA Shep. I'm Jess Budd. And I'm Greg Finn. And it is officially Marketing O'Clock. Here on June 12th, 2020. Remember, you can catch our famous Friday news show each and every Friday morning. All your digital marketing news from the week. Powered by the digital marketing community. And if you want to join the conversation, just hit us up. We're at Marketing O'Clock everywhere. So it's good to see you guys. What is happening? How's your week going? Well, my weekend was pretty good. And I was redoing my two five-year-old twins' bedrooms. My wife let them pick the colors out. And my oh. daughter picked this sea, green, blue, painted every wall that and called it the ocean and wanted to get these stickers to put up there. And my boy, he painted it Buffalo Bills colors. So white, one wall, two walls white, one wall bright red and the other bright blue and got a life-size version of Josh Allen, the Bills quarterback to put up on the wall. And so I was like, buddy, where do you want to put Josh Allen? And he goes, well, how big is he? And I'm like, well, he's about, he's about two inches taller than mommy. And he goes, all right. So he's about two inches taller than mommy and about two inches and two feet taller than you. <laughs> and I'm like, thanks. Shots fired. <laughs> thanks, shots fired. So then I'm like, all right, maybe my daughter's going to be easier. So I get in there. And she's got these stickers lined up. There's like a penguin and a turtle and a seahorse and stuff. I'm like, how do you want to put these up? And she looks at me and goes, Daddy, I want to, I want to put these up in order. Cutest to biggest. <laughs> and so I'm like, so I had to figure out what a five-year-old thinks cutest to biggest is. But overall, pretty good time. I'll grab some pictures and throw them up on marketing. Wow. Team. That yeah, was nice what? of you guys to let them pick that. I saw the red wall. It's red. Really red. It was not my idea. I, I hope it. he stays a Bills fan for a long time. Are we just the Patriots? Get him? Are they red, white, and blue? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thompson, Clippers? Who knows? Sports What's going team. on with you, Jess? Um, I almost had to redo a wall as well, but from the outside. We lost a tree in that giant windstorm last night. Did you guys experience that where you are? I know we're kind of far apart. Right yeah, now. we had like crazy rain. Yeah, it was, it was insane. And there's this beautiful, what well, was this beautiful maple tree. Maples are my favorite. And it was just lush and gorgeous. And we live on a corner lot. So it was kind of like our barrier for our backyard. And it just split in half in the wind. And, and they came and they took it down. And they just finished like 30 minutes ago. So you won't have to hear chainsaws on this podcast, which is good timing. But bad day to be a tree in the yeah. Bud household. That's How about sad. you, um, Well, we're running out of TV to watch here. So we've turned to YouTube. And we're either watching um, montages of Shacked and a Fool. Are you guys familiar with that? No. <laughs> Isn't that with, is that with Nick, Nick Cannon? No, it's Shaq. That's oh, Wild and Out. Yeah. Oh, wild and Out, sorry. <laughs> it's just like montages of guys messing up playing baseball, and my husband just watches it all day long. I don't know why it's entertaining. Wait, Shaq baseball? Involved? Shaq oh. and the Fool? Is that the TNT version? Wait, did I say baseball? It's basketball. Okay, Shaq and the Fool. My kids love that. Yeah, it's where Shaq picks the top five plays, and they make it, and they put graphics in, and, like, police cars will be going on the court and stuff, right? Well, they're always, like, people messing up. Yeah, that's great. Or if I get the remote, I like to watch videos of chiropractic adjustments. What? What? <laughs> Shaq. 
I hope you're searching in incognito mode, even though it doesn't matter anymore, as we learned oh. last week. <laughs> it's my new thing. It's really entertaining. You should check it out. Great. Well, speaking of YouTube, you can see our smiling faces over on the Search Engine Journal YouTube channel. It is on YouTube, Search Engine Journal. You can see me with a mustache last week, and then now I'm stash free. It itched too much. And I, I said it itched on the show, and Mark's like, in his tweets, he's like, you should wash your face. And I'm like, I do wash it. It's just there's hair coming out of my face. I don't like it. So a clean shaven. Who are our sponsors this week? This week's episode of Marketing O'Clock is brought to you by Ahrefs. Ahrefs is an all-in-one SEO tool set that gives you the tools you need to rank your website in Google and get tons of search traffic. If you want to learn more, just check out their blog or YouTube channel for step-by-step -step SEO tutorials. And they are offering our listeners a seven-day free trial for only $7. Head over to Ahrefs.com to sign up. That's A-H-R-E-F-S.com. And today's show is also sponsored by Optio. Optio is like a personal assistant, a really good recommendation source for your Google Ads accounts. It will look at the negatives, issues. It'll tell you when your spends have gone up. It's like just that extra layer of visibility that you really need, especially for people handling big accounts, or if you've just got a large volume of accounts, Optio is for you. And right now our listeners can get a six week free trial of Optio. It is absolutely free and you're going to find improvements you can make right away. Go to optio.com slash S-E-J. That's O-P-T-E-O dot -E com slash S-E-J. All right. And on to the main news. First up is some news about news. <laughs> Nothing more exciting than that. So made up. But... <laughs> and it's Facebook news in particular. It's a new dedicated section of Facebook that curates stories of general interest as well as local news all in one place. And it has officially rolled out on mobile specifically to all U.S. users. The point of the tab is to deliver what Facebook calls a dependable and relevant news experience on the platform. And from this tab, users will be able to react and share articles, but not comment on them. So you're strictly just reading through everything. You can also hide topics, articles, or specific publishers that you don't want to see, which is nice because I checked it out today. And the first thing that I got was stock market news. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't care about that. <laughs> Did you guys know that it's uh, apparently Dow? Wow. Wow. That was the first stock market pun we have ever had on the show. And hopefully I, it's the last. <laughs> I, I spy what you did there. I didn't even get that one. Yeah, I don't get it. That's how little I know. It's so good. It was the money. Anyway, um, if you're a publisher, thank you for listening, first of all. But if you're wondering how to qualify to show up in this news tab, there's a few things you have to do. And we'll have a link in the show notes to that resource to tell you exactly how you can uh, adhere to guidelines and actually submit yourself into the news index. So like I said, we'll have that information in the show notes. You can check it out. Otherwise, just head on on your phone to Facebook, check out what's in your news tab and get some curated news for you or hot stock tips. Who knows? Not from the show. No. Don't take anything we do. <laughs> no. Take anything with that. Something that, all right, and, and in from the financial buzzer here, fresh off the wire, in case you missed it, there was just the Snapchat, I don't even know the name of it, but they had their big announcement, the yearly event. It just happened right before we recorded and they dropped a lot of information and a lot of new features that were really great and I think really geared towards users. So before I get into it, I have a, a quick question for Hope and I want to take the temperature on Snapchat. Are you in on Snapchat still or are you out on Snapchat? I deleted Snapchat. Okay, well, you might want to reinstall it because Hope specifically, my favorite thing from the event yesterday was the, the new minis is what they're called. It's like an app within Snapchat. And so there's some things you can do where if you're going to Coachella, if there's ever a Coachella again, you can coordinate and plan your festival lineup with friends, right? That's cool. Yes, Great I timing. actually wanted to go to Coachella this year. So look, get it, get Snap, chat, download it again. And then another thing you can do is you can hook in with Adam, A-T-O-M, and you can check out movie tickets and you can together buy tickets and seats at a movie theater for a show together. So like really cool little micro interactions. This is right up my alley. I can buy movie tickets with all my friends. And you can stream the latest trailers with your friends watching it together. Oh my gosh. Yes. That last this is going to revolutionize the way I watch trailers. So now, 
I love <laughs> trailers. I'm not even kidding. I was hanging out with my friends last week, and for an hour, all we did was watch trailers. That's what we did. Well, you can do wow. it virtually now. And if you're <laughs> bummed and you're really stressed out because you can't go to Coachella and you can't go to the theater and any of those seats you wanted, or you have to be too far, you have to be six feet apart, <laughs> um, they have Headspace Mini. So you can do quick meditations with your friends and sending messages. So Headspace is baked in. Um, but I thought that was really innovative. Like you're pulling all these different experiences in with Snapchat. So really cool. Another thing that you're going to be able to do, and this is probably all all three of you probably are going to love this. Um, you can play games with each other using your bitmoji. So you can play these third-party games, and that character is your bitmoji. That's so I really that's, fun. That that's sounds cool. fun. Yeah. I'm more into you, Animal Crossing right now. So you are? Yeah. I love really? Animal Crossing. <laughs> do you play it, or do you watch people play it? You play Nintendo. it. No, it's on Nintendo. No, I know what it is, but She's do a you real play it? Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I will look on YouTube. I'll look up Five Star Islands. And, like, it's crazy how much time people put into these islands. I'll, like, watch those for inspiration to build my own island. But, yeah. Because yeah, that roller coaster tycoon is getting real dusty then. <laughs> All right. So there's also um, Bitmoji Paint where you can use your Bitmoji and paint with people. It looks really cool. And then there's a lot of new machine learning with lens. And if you look at the videos, it's kind of wild. You can see like throwing paint on buildings and, snap, and the lens can now see like what is a building and what isn't a building and, and like land right on the front. You've got waves coming through like towers and stuff. It's really cool. A lot of technology in there. And then they're also having a new action bar that I think people that might not have used that before, they're going to have a more, I guess, standardized bar. So hopefully that lets more people hop on. And hope if i didn't sell you enough just wait there's more there's now a dog scanner so you can use snapchat scan a dog know where some filter would go on a dog but it could tell you what breed the dog is no way yes and there's a nutrition scanner for food so you can take those vegan dogs jess snap that picture and they can tell you how many, many, how many vitamins are in there <laughs> and there's some other things too you can scan tree plants i believe and if you look in the show notes, I saw a beautiful bush out in the wild yesterday. Does anybody happen to know what that is? We'll have to throw it on marketingclock.com. No, it's, I hope is it's it not poison, poison ivy. ivy. Yeah, it's poison ivy. <laughs> 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 but I was going to put it on Instagram and be like, oh, I love nature. It's frolicking through the bushes. I but, wonder what it would say about Jess's poor dead tree. Well, it would say no longer a plant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Firewood. Sad. That's what we're going to use it for, for sure. Yeah, I'd go out on a limb and say it wouldn't get that. Leave me alone. <laughs> get out of here. I hate it. <laughs> All right. But check out uh, the show notes, marketingclock.com, and see everything that Snapchat released. It's really cool stuff and really innovative, especially on the one side. And I have some news from Facebook. They are updating the app that nobody asked for, also known as Messenger, so that business page owners can toggle back and forth between personal and customer messages. And this is a quote from the announcement. It says, according to our research, over 90% of Facebook business admins already use Messenger to chat with friends and family. Because they're forced to, because <laughs> you're forced to download the app. It makes yeah. me so mad. I don't want that stupid app on my phone. So this means, with this change, that page owners will be able to respond to the customer messages right from within the app, all your messages, both business and personal, will appear in that one inbox, and you can choose whether you want to reply as your business or yourself. Matt Southern says they're still separated enough to prevent businesses from ac accidentally responding to a customer from their personal account, but I'm kind of nervous for people keeping this straight. Like, you got to make sure you're logged in the right place before you reply. And there's no additional steps required in order to send and receive business messages through Facebook Messenger. You'll be opted in whether you want to or not, just like the Messenger app itself. Very and on brand. Is, yeah. <laughs> you can also opt in for what everyone loves, more notifications. So you can get notified more for your business messages if you forget to respond. So that seems like a nice feature. All right. And rounding out our news this week comes from Koi Wolf, John Henshaw at Henshaw on Twitter over at KoiWolf.news. And the title of the article is Head of Google Ads to Run Search. Move concerns SEO veterans about the future of search. 
And from the article, John says that Google has announced that Prabhakar Ravagan, the former head of Google Ads, is changing roles to the head of Google Search while simultaneously overseeing ads. And I thought immediately, this is great. You guys are sportsters, right? You guys know sports. Yeah. It reminds me of when you get the <laughs> coach-GM combo, right? Oh, you're coaching, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're coaching the team, and all of a sudden you got to get all the talent in, and you have to recruit, keep people happy. Why would you have somebody overseeing everything? And it sounds like a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. It does sound like a terrible reason, a terrible, terrible idea. And John goes on to say something that is, is quite telling, and he says that Google Ads and Google Search are separated for a reason. Google's primary source of revenue is from advertising. And the decisions the Google Ads team makes for its product appear to be significantly different from what motivates the Google Search team. Correct? Google Ads' primary mission is to make as much revenue from advertisements as possible. One of the ways they accomplish this is by changing the product and rules to maximize their profit further. And John talks about how this is problematic. And Koi Wolf, and what John has set up there, is phenomenal. Our friend of the show, Akvila, writes over there for a lot of social stuff and ads. And John, he doesn't pull any punches. And a lot of times you'll see these articles and people dance around a topic. John doesn't. He's not afraid. Um, so go check that article. And another thing that he did is he interviewed a bunch of veterans in the SEO industry. Um, and one of our show favorites here from a... Um, getting things right standpoint, I guess, is Aaron Wall. And he had a very succinct view on how things have changed, specifically with Google search. And Aaron said, when Google won the search market, they did it via about a half dozen important means. Superior Google search relevancy, a lighter ad load than competing search engines, a clean and uncluttered interface, a strong brand focused exclusively on search, bundling distribution of their web browser toolbar for other software. And he goes on to say a few more. And then Aaron goes on to say, gradually over time, Google boiled the frog. Clear shading and borders on ad units disappeared. Right rail ads moved above the fold. Ad units grew larger with more extensions. Everyone in search is aware Google magically increases their ad revenues about 20% year after year after year after year. And outside of YouTube, most of the remaining portion of this is done by displacing the click flow away from the organic results to the ads. And so I think the real point of this is, should we be worried about Google search, right? Like not the ad side, the search side. If you're an SEO, should you be worried? Yeah, I think so, very. And then uh, I know we're going a little bit long on this, but yesterday John tweeted out as well, different from the article, he said, I'm surprised if we don't see paid and organic results intermingled in the SERPs by the end of the year. Amazon is doing it now, and it just seems like the next logical step for more ad revenue. We'll be told it's good and fair for organic because it pushes up the page. I can't argue with that. I can't argue with that. So well, I feel like we all should be worried. I kind of feel like Google should be worried as well. We just learned. We just learned how you got to the point of dominance. We just covered that. And with this over monetization and bloat and coach GM coming, they should be scared of someone right now that's working on a superior organic search relevancy, a lighter ad load, a clean and uncluttered interface, a strong brand focused exclusively on search, because that ain't you. Watch out. You have a theory as to who it is? I feel like that was leading up to something. No, I mean, oh. <laughs> somebody should. I thought you were going to say DuckDuckGo because they have all these I billboards love Duck, going Duck, Go. now. I know you do. I'm Team DuckDuckGo now. <laughs> now it's time for this week's Take of the Week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. And this week's take of the week was a response to a story that Shep, I think you're going to cover a little bit later, but it was about some matching changes in Google. And there were some issues where things are getting dropped. We'll hear about it in a second. But Sam Reklowitz at Digital Sam I Am followed up to this article talking about additional unhelpful changes for advertisers and things that help to 
help Google's margins and cost per clicks. And he, ha he had the hypothesis that next change coming, negatives can be ignored when Google thinks it's okay. They kind of already do that because they say they can ignore them after 16 words or whatever. Yeah, I just saw that. I said, Sam, how dare you? Yeah. How <laughs> dare you give them that idea <laughs> to just forget negatives if they think it's worthy? How dare you, Sam? And now it's time for this week's I See Why Am I. This is something you just might not have seen. Maybe something that you overlooked. But you shouldn't have. I see why am I everyone. This is a tweet from Pamela Lund, Queen of Spice herself, at Pamela underscore Lund on Twitter. Got an email from Google Ads that some of my managed accounts got the COVID-19 credit with instructions for how to see which ones. Log into my MCC, follow the instructions to see which ones, and none of my accounts show credits. Anyone else? And there are a lot of responses to this, and I didn't see one person say that they've like been able to use their credits yet or have any evidence of them. Like, what is going on with this? I think I haven't seen Zealand. any. I heard some people in New Zealand got them. That's all I heard. <laughs> Must be nice. I haven't seen anything. Must have missed it. I Me guess. either. Now it's time for this week's lightning round. Pew, pew. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts. Paid, organic, and social. This week's paid lightning round is brought to you by Optio. Optio is your go-to tool for Google ads. You might be thinking now, business is ramping up. I need more help. Before you think about bringing somebody onto your team, give Optio a test run. It gives you everything that you need to know about fluctuations in your account, ways that it thinks you can get better. And the best part is you can get that free trial. Shep, how do you use Optio? Optio will alert you if you have keyword conflicts in your account. So if you have a negative keyword applied to an ad group or campaign that matches or partially matches one of your keywords, you'll get an alert right away. This is something that seems so obvious and easy for Google ads to notify advertisers if it's going on. And Microsoft will even tell you if you have keyword conflicts in your account, but Google does not always tell you. So this is really nice that Optio lets advertisers know when that's happening because you definitely want to fix it. Yep. And if you want to learn more and get a six week free trial of Optio, go to optio.com forward slash S E J. That's O P T E O.com forward slash S E J. And first up in the paid universe this week, Google has a confirmed clicks initiative, which aims to improve web user experience and limit publishers benefiting from people accidentally clicking on ads. Publishers using AdSense and ad exchange are complaining that they're losing revenue because of this initiative. And this has been around since at least 2012, but this is a new news story. According to Digiday, if Google detects a lot of accidental clicks on a publisher's ad unit, then it will layer on a site visit message. So users have to click twice to get the redirected web page. And the result is a drop in ad revenue between 40 and 60%, allegedly. I feel like we have to say that. The Good. Next, yeah. If you're one of those people tricking, tricking everybody to clicks, like, I print out a lot of coloring pages for my kids. It is impossible to know which one of those buttons actually prints things. They're like, which is the real download button? Good. Get rid of it. I realize coloring pages were such a big culprit of these spammy ads. <laughs> no, I, I just, those, they're very egregious. I'll find a bad example and show it. But I, anything that's like anything download, you a lot of times see those ways to trick people. Yeah, so if you're doing anything sketchy, don't be surprised if people have to click twice. And next up, we have a tweet from Matt McGee, at Matt McGee on Twitter. And he found this lead center in Facebook that I didn't see anyone else on Twitter who had access to this yet, but it's like a mini CRM to manage leads from lead form ads. It's kind of cool looking. He doesn't have any information coming in here yet, but you can see in progress leads, interested leads, converted leads, and raw leads. So, I don't know. They have some kind of CRM tool going on. I'd need to play around with it to know if it was any good, but not surprising. Facebook is doing everything these days. They need to relax. <laughs> and next up, we have a story from Greg Finn from cypressnorth.com. You may have picked up on this on the show over the last couple of weeks, but we've noticed lately that Google's close variant matching has been 
more and more egregious lately, and it's pr pretty upsetting to us. So Greg has a screenshot in here of a keyword report where exact match close variants are just completely out of the control. Like you guys have to check this out. So they'll drop important terms like system in lean manufacturing 5S system. Like somebody could just be looking up a definition. Can I or go a step further, Shep? They drop manufacturing and, and system. Two words, two terms, in exact match. So lean manufacturing 5S system turned into 5S or lean 5S. It's terrible. It's criminal. Yes. And that's in a system mark, not, not an assist for something bad, but we're trying to, we getting money back for these terms that shouldn't have occurred for a client. And he was telling me how bad it is. And I'm, I'm like, well, let's, let's go see this. And I looked at it. I was like, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> this is terrible. Or they drop tool a bunch of times in the exact match keywords. Like it's just a joke. You and have to look at it and well. cry. Yeah. The important things like, software when you're selling software and you ditch the word software you can't do that that isn't that is not acceptable well they and, can and they did well they shouldn't and they they, they we need to figure out ways so that they won't because mm -hmm. in, and in case just a quick backstory in case you didn't know what exact match is it used to actually be exact then they added in close variants with misspellings and they kind of allowed you to do function terms and to take a term out that they think is a function term, like something that doesn't really make sense, like from or the, really basic things. But these aren't function terms. Software is a critical term. And it is a problem that they're doing this. And I wish other people would speak up. And then when you ask them about it, like customer support, they just are not helpful at all. It's just bad. Moving on, Facebook is relaxing their ban on ads for face masks. They are specifically allowing ads for non-medical masks now, and they have a definition for that. You guys can check it out in the show notes. You are not allowed to make medical or health claims on ads for masks on Facebook. This includes mentions of disease prevention, protection of the respiratory system, or the ability to filter out germs. You may remember the rule originally came into effect in March as COVID-19 was spreading and there were fears of a mask shortage. So they did this in order to prevent price gouging, hoarding, and the spread of information. But now they're relaxing it a bit. So they're not going to be selling the ones that they're using in hospitals, but they'll be selling that those nice Disney masks maybe that are just going to make up all the revenue from the parks being closed for two months. You talk about the hats? No, they have Disney they have face masks now because the parks are reopening, and I really think it's going to make for make up for all the lost revenue. I mean, what do you mean Disney voice. masks? You need to explain. I don't know what you're talking about. Like if you go on the Shop Disney Parks app, you oh, can get. Oh, hang on. Let me <laughs> let me get my phone out and get the sh sh Shops Disney Park. Yeah. Um, okay, well, what do they look like? Well, first of all. They're making kids as young as two wear the masks. And at first it was three. And I think they changed it to two so more people have to wear them. And like, you're only going to get to wear a two-year-old, get a two-year-old to wear a mask if Buzz Lightyear is on it or whatever. Oh, do I they make you look like Buzz Lightyear? Yeah. Oh, oh cool. okay. That's cool. That's so it's cool. like, a, it's like a, almost like a, a mask, like a traditional Halloween mask, but it's half and it covers your face and turns you into somebody else. Yeah. So some of them are like Donald Duck's beak. Okay, I'm with you, Shep. And then some idea. are like just a nice step and repeat pattern. But I'm telling you, they're charging 30 bucks, bucks a mask. They're, wow. they're not going to be hurting from the shutdown at all. They've got <laughs> well, it figured out. Their stock was down 6%. It talked to Jess oh, just yes. yesterday. So mm -hmm. time to buy. You heard it here from Shep first. Yeah, the bears and the bulls, they're out there, man. And the ducks and the mice. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, there's a new report from mobile fuse and mobile marketer that says mobile ad engagement has been risen 15 percent in the past few months despite what those adsense publishers are saying this is a trend they saw across the board but they do highlight a couple of specific groups that saw the biggest jump so engagement for people from ages 18 to 34 rose from a pre-pandemic level of 0.73 percent to a high of 0.77 percent in April and then it fell again in May. I think it's interesting, like when this first happened, everyone was like making bread and stuff and like trying to find fun things to do. Like I was one of them and now I'm just like back on my phone. Accidentally you baked a pie. on ads. You baked I, a pie, didn't you? Yeah, I totally baked a pie. I was like buying butter every time I went to the store. I was a baking fiend. Now I'm just like on my phone. Oops, accidentally clicked on an ad all day long. <laughs> 
And they also said that women have the highest level, level of engagement over men. Very interesting. So we'll have to see if this, trends, this trend continues post-pandemic. And that is it for paid. All right, this week's organic lightning round is brought to you by Ahrefs. And Ahrefs is a fantastic tool that will show you how your website is performing, but not only that, you can spy on your competitors. Ahrefs will allow you to see backlink data, what pages are performing the best for your site and for competitors. It's the all-in-one tool that you need, that any webmaster needs for their site. Jess, how do you use Ahrefs? So our loyal listeners already know, Greg, how much you love alerts and sending them to us at all hours of the day or night. But we haven't really talked about the alerts in Ahrefs other than the fact that they exist and you send them to us. So let's talk about them. They're customizable people, which is awesome. And you can choose what sort of information you want to receive and how often. So for example, if you just want daily updates on new or lost backlinks to your own site, you can set that up. If you want to spy on your competitors, like Greg said, and get weekly notifications about any backlinks they may be receiving so that you can say, hey, I want, you know, I want to maybe collaborate with someone. You can do that too. And you can use Ahrefs to alert you whenever your site, say, starts ranking for a new keyword or if there's new content out there, not on your site, but somewhere else that is related to one of the keywords that you're tracking. You can set up alerts for all sorts of things. It's really, really awesome. They're easy to set up and they're great, like I said, for anything you're using Ahrefs to do, whether it's competitive research or monitoring your own site's performance. It's great stuff. Yeah, and I was just looking today, I had an email come in a client, 52 new backlinks, two lost. I was checking it out. Love it. Can't recommend it enough. And best part is you can try it seven days, seven bucks. Head on over to hrefs.com. That is A-H-R-E-F-S.com to sign up. And they just redid their site. It is cutting edge. They have their own font. They have their own web font. They turned that cool blocky ro robotic thing in there. But really well done redesign to the homepage. Super modern. Love it. Love it. All right, Greg, what's happening in organic this week? Well, first up this week, we have an article from Danny Sullivan of Google, and he, the name of the article is Why Keeping Spam Out of Search is So Important. Danny just gives an answer, and, but then he talks about what they do, but his answer was, without our spam fighting systems and teams, the quality of search would be reduced. It would be a lot harder to find helpful information you can trust. One very interesting piece of information was 25 billion spammy pages are detected each day, according to Danny. I mean, that's a lot. I'm not a mathematician here, mm -hmm. but that seems like a lot. Many pages. He also went on to define spam, how to spot the spam. And uh, defining spam, isn't it just that delicious canned meat that you yeah, love? Yeah, that's just? what I was going to say. Me? That's the last thing I would eat. Is it good, though? I've never tried it, even in my meat-eating days. It's all right. People in Hawaii really like it. We um, hide it at our Easter egg hunt every year. It's like the grand prize. Really? We can, yeah, we had a can of Spam. Yeah, I and wonder why. the winner gets dinner. Is it a Spam dinner or a real dinner? A spam dinner. That's cool. Yeah, people in Hawaii love Spam for some reason. Why? Uh, it's really salty, right? It's like just really, really salty ham. I don't eat swine, especially swine from a can. So yeah, but not. don't they have like an actual wild pig population in Hawaii that they could just hunt and eat their own? What do they need canned meat for? I don't know. They like slice yeah. it up thin and grill it. Canned swine. That's <laughs> the chef's go-to meal of choice. Anyway, you can spot the spammers. He talks about how they spot the spammers, how they stop the spammers. So there's a lot of good information in there in general. Didn't see anything about ads blocking that and having relevant stuff, but how to stop this 25 billion people trying to get into the SERPs every day. All right, next up was a great video from the channel Measure School. It's a phenomenal analytics channel, and they talk about how you can put different Google fonts into Google Data Studio. And this is very cool. You can really punch up your reports and not have everything look like Arial. And there's a little style URL that you can put in. The video is, is really helpful. It's about eight minutes long. You probably only need to watch it for about a minute of there, but it goes through a couple different options. It even shows you how to do 3D text in the video into your data studio. It's awesome. And it's as easy as taking a Google font URL, putting it into the style URL, and then you can change the size and everything. So you can really, really, really customize data studio. And again, I fave this. I 
co-sign this. I love it. I'm going to change all my reports to the Google equivalent of Comic Sans. That would be so fun. Or okay. curls. I was just oh. about to say, the best part of this is you can't use Papyrus because it's not a Google font. I hate Papyrus. I don't Wait. even know what that one looks I'm not a font lady. Yes, you do. It's everywhere. You know, You've seen it. Papyrus is the one that people think you can use for anything. You'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm up in the woods. It's a woodsy font. Oh, I'm going back to ancient Egypt. It's an egypt font. Oh, I'm sophisticated. It's a sophisticated font. Oh, you know, it's Greek. It's the one they use for everything, and it stinks. It, have you ever seen the movie Avatar, James Cameron? Hope, yeah. have you seen Avatar? You probably have the poster behind your, your back there. No. You've never seen Avatar? I haven't. I don't know. It just doesn't. It looks weird. It's not. It's okay. It's like fine. You, they, you would like it's it, a Hope. Great map. Their tails. I just. It freaks me out. You like those things with 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 purple foam. These are a bunch of of blue cat people. You'd like that. What what other movies have uh, blue um, cats? Yeah. Well, no, the 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 purple rock man. Oh, Thanos. Yes. Thor. Thor. Correct, Jess. Yes. Thor. No, he has beautiful blonde. Locks. He does not have a purple face. <laughs> well, if you've if seen that movie, that is Papyrus font. They spent about, what, $200 billion, about as many people are spamming Google each day, and they spent that budget, and then they didn't have a dime left for a single font. Yet Ahrefs can make their own font, their own web font on their homepage. All right, I digress. Something hope that you might like as well is Amazon has a new AI technique that lets users virtually try on outfits. So mm. the article, the virtual part, I, I disagree. It's a little bit clickbaity, but there's three different things that came out about what Amazon is trying to do. One is to let people fine tune search queries by describing variations on a product image. So, so you'll get something that looks really similar. Another thing is to suggest products that match what somebody has already selected and are looking at. And then the third part is that you synthesize an image of a model from different product pages to see how something works. And again, it's not really you. And this is where I got worried because if you guys scroll down, we'll put on marketingclock.com, there's pictures of this in action. And I'm looking at this and it's like, you can see one of the models. You can't see the men's, mo men's belly button model, of course, but the women, you can see like their whole body. And it's like, how do you get your body on Amazon? Isn't that strange? They're like, probably not real bodies. So that, Chef, you're absolutely right. So what happens is you like can scan yourself and you get your body shape generation model and it, it generates uh, your shape. Who no, would no, sign no, up no, for no, that no, in no, their no. right? That, is, that no. sounds like a cruel and unusual punishment. People would scan my issues. body no. <laughs> and let me see my body type on the screen. No. It's horrible. It's no. horrible. <laughs> So you scan your body, no. right? <laughs> yep. And then you go on and you can, the, what Amazon will do, it'll, it'll take the clothing and match it to that body shape and put it on and show you what it might look like on a body that's not yours, but resembles you based off of the scan. Also, that does hope nothing. If, hope, since you haven't seen Avatar, this is the plot of Avatar, by the way. You know there's a second one coming out, so maybe I'll watch that one. What are they calling yeah, it? Yeah, I think they're the I only Americans know. allowed in Avatar 2. <laughs> but anyway i was like you're looking at this and this isn't your body and it's like showing like these shirts are fairly revealing right that and doesn't like, help me at all what does that looking do at me? it and you're like well this isn't like an any belly button i'm an audi i can't even like relate to this that's what i thought <laughs> you know I, like this just reminds me of greg i don't remember which one of us it was i think it's probably happened to all of us we're like oh that's not a good picture of me i'm not photogenic and your answer is always no that's what you look like <laughs> it's my answer that's what it looks like i was like do you, want to, do you want to see the picture it's like no you took a picture of me like that's who i am sorry <laughs> i'm sorry for you but that's who i am love it hate it all right next up from barry schwartz over at search engine roundtable there is a specific way we, to opt out of what we talked about last week, the scrolling to a certain point in the page from a featured snippet. I've seen this live in person. It's great. I like it a lot where it will have a featured snippet. If you click on it, you will automatically get shot down on the page and you'll see what you clicked on in yellow. I think Glenn Gabe called it the Google of Google or something like that last week. But you can get out of that by using document dash policy equals force load at top. So if you don't want this happening, 
you can make the page load at the top. So people are like, well, what happens if I do this? Is this going to be bad for my SEO? Is this going to ban me from featured snippets? And Danny Sullivan said no. So if you don't want to use this, if you don't want people to go lower on the page, you can use this. Head on over to the show notes to see how to do it. All right, next up, Google is going to be adding another element to their legal. Um, I don't even know what to call it. It's how you kind of, you're snitching on somebody, right? <laughs> and you can say it's a copyright infringement. There's trademark infringement. You can now do it based on counterfeit goods being sold. I love this. They just added in shopping, organic shopping. So I think you need this now. Um, but if you have somebody that's got a, a fake version of your goods, you can now report them. Um, do you guys have any fake stuff? I mean, I don't, I feel like, I don't know. I don't see people selling fake stuff online anymore. Everything I have is fake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I have like a dress um, from that Fashion Nova place that looks like something Cardi B wore at the VMAs. Is that English? <laughs> but Shep, it's like a known, it's not like it's a fake version of a designer, right? They're just like, hey, here's our take on that, right? Like they admit that it's, it's a, not real. It's a total ripoff. It's not like when you go to like, I don't know, a street no, vendor yeah. and the logo's slightly off, right? Not quite, but it, it should be illegal. Well, Shep, don't look for that in Google anymore. And if you see it, report it. All right. And lastly here was from a cool webinar featuring Martin Split from Google. You might have seen him at the e-summit last week. And he talked to the folks over at Onely. There was a really good clip that I saw. We'll link, again, it'll be in the show notes if you want to watch it. But he was talking about some advice to give to webmasters for ranking for a term. And he basically said, look through the page, look at the page through the user's eyes and try to answer what is this page about in one sentence without using the word and. <clears throat> and Jess, I talked about that today on a client call and you I was did. trying to explain the page and I used the word and and I'm like, whoops, I used the word and. and then it's I, really hard to do, but it's a great, it's, it's a great test. It is. And you should take this clip and bookmark it because it's awesome. And it's the same Martin that you may love from the Search Off the Record podcast, Google's Webmaster podcast. Do you guys like that first episode of that? You like, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. It was announced and made, and there's still not an episode yet. <laughs> what did I guess? Like 12 they episodes? Launched, oh, my no God. Episodes. I thought you were calling me out for not listening. They, ha no. they really haven't launched it? No, no episodes. I think I'm like – if there's never an episode and I guess 12, like Finstradamus, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I had the under and Shep had the over. So, so yeah. far, Greg, you and I are winning. That's so right. So Greg only wins if it's right on. I don't know how sports betting What works. kind of bet is that? <laughs> Jess only does stonks. Don't worry about her. All right. Serpentine? Is it a serpentine? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a serpentine podcast. All right. That's it, bud. All for organic. What's happening in social? All right, first up in the social news, Twitter has verified that it is working on bringing back user requests for verification. So there's no it's a verification details. badge. The little check thing? Oh, please. You have one. The blue check. Oh, did you say what is it? Yeah, what yeah. is verification? Says the guy in the room that has one. <laughs> Enlighten me. So it's that little blue check mark that says you are who you say you are. And it used to be something that you could request to be verified, and that is going to be coming back. We don't know exactly when. Twitter did not confirm when it's rolling out, but you will be able to request that verification from within the app. They're also going to be adding more transparency around it. They're going to actually publish their guidelines, which I didn't realize they hadn't done before. But they're going to actually publish the guidelines to the public on what is required of you in order to be verified. So it's nice. Let's see how that goes. I have a request. Yes. They should really check who has these. I shouldn't have one of these. Why? You're, <laughs> you're a legit personality. Look at you. Can I, can I give Can I give mine to Shep? I don't I know if you one. can. I really don't. I wish I wasn't on Twitter. <laughs> you're great. <laughs> you, you you should be great on Twitter. I know. I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> What's your handle? Give your handle out, Shep. My handle is <laughs> at Shep Zernheld. Um, I I do have a really nice uh bio. Is that what you call it on the Twitter? The uh, Real Housewife of Digital Marketing. You can check me out. I think that's funny. Shep doesn't think she's funny, but the rest of the world does. So yeah. everyone follow her on Twitter. Yes. Do you know who else is really good on Twitter? Mark. Mark from, is yeah. very good. Mark, Mark is from great. marketing. 
Mark underscore from underscore MKTG on Twitter. He, and he's got a good bio too. What is he, the Mary Poppins of Funnels? Yeah. I think this? <laughs> it's great. Is that what it says? I've never read it. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, let's stick with Twitter here. Keep it going. Something if you're on Android that you may now see, and I'm just going to read Twitter's tweet about it. Sharing an article can spark conversation. Duh, that wasn't in the tweet. So you may want to read it before you tweet it. Duh, also not in the tweet. To help promote informed discussion, we're testing a new prompt on Android. When you retweet an article that you haven't opened on Twitter, we may ask if you'd like to open it first. Okay, that sounds innocent enough, but it's caused quite an uproar in the Twitterverse. Some people love the idea, some people are outraged by it, some people are just using this as a platform to request an edit button, as per the usual. It, things got nasty out there on this thread, but then one person was like, listen, if I was interested in reading, I wouldn't be on Twitter, which made me laugh. <laughs> At least we're being honest with ourselves. Well, my thing is like, yeah, Marketing Clock put out a tweet about the show. Um, bro, I was here. I'm doing the show. I know that I, I know what I said. Like I said these words right now and I, I'm, I'm good with retweeting. Them. Or like I wrote the, the article. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's is it thing. not going to let you or is it just asking you if you read it? No, it's just asking you if you want to open it. It's just assuming that you fine. haven't. It's letting you. Yeah. And it, and it's only, it only knows if you read it in Twitter, or you opened it in Twitter. So if you read it somewhere else, it doesn't know that people were concerned that Twitter was following you around. It's not. It's just a nice like, hey, did, did you want to open this before you share it kind of thing? I don't know. I, I get that. I get Whatever. that. I get it. The intent is good. I, I just like freedom in general. And like my, the downside is honestly, like what if down the road they change it and say, when you tweet, you got a little mark next to it saying, I didn't read the tweet. And then I put out this, this marketing clock and then doesn't do as well in the algorithm, but I was here. I know what I said. Nobody knows this more than me other than, than you three. And it's like yeah. that, that's my problem is if it's just internal, if it's just a warning, just sure. But not, nothing in life is ever just a warning. Like that's, that's. It's pessimistic Greg coming out. Yeah. Conspiracy theorist Greg. Yeah. And I guess bit. too, then people might just say, well, I'm not going to share it at all then because I don't want that little warning and then <laughs> engagement's down. So maybe Twitter, if you're listening, take that into consideration. Um, what else we got? Oh, staying with Twitter and something else that they're testing. Uh, shout out to BFF of the show, Glenn Gabe for the heads up. He shared a screenshot from Jane Manchin Wong or at Wong M. Jane on the Twitter that showed Twitter is testing emoji reactions and also a react with fleet option, which snore. In addition to the standard retweet and retweet with comment, retweet with comment choices that we have now. So I don't know about fleets. I feel like that's really, really stupid, but I like the reaction option. I'm okay with I, that. I love reacting to things. I only want it if they have the bear hugging the heart. No. <laughs> that's Facebook, <Chef. laughs> No, but there was that 100 in there, which I think we've started to use a lot more in our Slack, and I, I like it. So that's fine. Um, but just one note, I think right before the show launched, they said that it was an old test, and I don't think it's actually coming. Oh. But who knows? They, they, they say things all the time, but it might be cool to react with that. Yeah, they should, they should come back with that if it's old. I want it. All right. Instagram also has a lovely test in the works. Once you are, quote, all caught up, you may see a tabbed view in your main feed that gives you the option to either view posts from accounts that Instagram suggests you follow or look at some older posts that you've already seen. And that's fine. I don't really have any strong opinions on this, except the fact that it's probably a waste of time in general. I don't know a single human being that's ever been all caught up oh on my Instagram. God. I was never all caught up. And then just this quarantine... Since I stopped make, making bread, I am all caught up all the time. It's so like- Really? I feel so bad about myself. Yes. That's it. I, that is, you're not following enough cats because there's, there should not be an end to the feed. That's crazy. Did you Check. feel kind of like achieved or ashamed? No, I feel so ashamed. Like I need to get off Instagram. I don't even oh, like you do. it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't? You're good at Instagram, just like you're good at Twitter. Jeff, that's a problem. You have a problem. I know. Get making those pies. That pie looked good. Did it taste good? Was oh, it apple delicious. pie? Yeah, it was an apple pie baked from scratch. And it's a really good upper body workout. Making pie? Yeah, you have to roll out cold it. dough. Not eating it. Not eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Shep, have you seen this test then once you're caught up? Have you seen this suggested no. versus old? 
Mm-mm. Let us know if you do. Let us know how you like it. Okay. It's riveting <laughs> stuff. Okay. Next up, Facebook is rolling out new labels to indicate content from state controlled media. The labels will show on pages, posts, and ads in an effort to increase transparency when a news outlet may be, quote, under the influence of government. So that's good. That More- sounds like something you get pulled over for. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> under the influence what happened? of government. <laughs> yeah. I got a, uh, a, a DUI. What? You get driving while under the influence of government. Government. You know? Mind control. <laughs> yeah. I was in the wrong lane. Ireland got me. (laughs) (laughs) You've actually gone to Europe, right? And driven on the other side of the road. How does that feel? I've never. I have. Well, I didn't drive. I was in the passenger seat. No, I went to some island. Portugal, Azores or something. I think they're on the same side of the road. If not, (laughs) if not, you didn't kill anybody there. (laughs) Okay, never mind. All right. More from Facebook. They are testing. There's just so much stuff, so much testing in the news this week. They're testing a new search feature that essentially mimics Google's knowledge panel. That's not how people use Facebook. Google gave up on being a social network. Facebook should quit while they're ahead, not try to be a search engine. I'm done with that story. Stupid. Well, what Facebook really should do is look at that snap event from yesterday and copy everything from that because that thing was awesome. And it was like virtual. It was amazing. People were up on stage and it was like a virtual background. And then one one woman, I forgot to even mention this, there's voice search coming to Snap where you can now just say, she goes, hey, Snapchat, turn my hair pink. And her hair turns pink. It was crazy. But that's what yeah. Facebook should be doing, not taking they Wikipedia from yeah, Everyone they, rips off Snapchat yeah. every time they do anything. And then Snapchat just doesn't have anyone on it still. It's very sad. Yeah. Send it to the NPE team or what did we call them last week? Copy everyone's take stuff. Cats. Whatever. That's cats. Copy everyone. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> if you were there, it's funny. If you weren't, moving on. So if guys, you weren't, go listen to last week. Oh, yeah, you okay. can. It's still available. You can see me with a mustache. on yeah. YouTube. Do, we, do I look better with a mustache or without? I'm used to you without, so that's not fair, but it was really fun to have you with it for a while. Yeah. Well, definitely search engine journal on YouTube for everything. Yeah, always. See him with and without. Comment below. All right, guys, I have breaking news on the youth because you know I'm on the pulse, right? Okay. So the kids are using TikTok. I knew. Wait, we need hope. Hope. <laughs> are you still using TikTok? Um. <laughs> I'm in the phase right now where I deleted it. I go through phases. I seriously hope I I delete it and then I get it again every two weeks probably. You are such a weirdo. Like you can only delete I, it or not I, have it on your phone. It's like it's, you're just it's so addicting. I can't even describe it. There are nights where I would stay up till three a.m. just watching the weirdest stuff. That's really funny because when I watched TikTok, it was like the exact opposite. It was like. I just felt shame and disgust <laughs> for these yeah. videos I was watching. Yeah. But you're like, oh, I need more of them. No, it's not even like I want to watch it. I just keep going. No, she thinks it's funny. She sent me videos once. She's like, this is hilarious. You're going to love it. I'm like, no, it's not funny. There There's was one once stuff. that she got me with Star Wars. But this isn't even about you, Hope. Like, for once, you're too old for something. So there was a study done by Custodio, I believe is how you pronounce it. Q-U-S-T-O-D-I-O. They did a study on kids ages 14, no, four to 15. So this was done in the name of like, I, I don't want brand safety or like cautioning parents. It wasn't supposed to be for advertisers, but it, marketers should be listening because there's interesting stats here. Kids- you, should, you should have a better name than Quistodio if you're going <laughs> to interview four-year-olds. Sorry. Like I'm not letting my saying. kids, I'm not letting my twins, I'm going to send them back up to the Josh Allen and C room. Say, get, get away from Quistodio. Don't talk to them. Well, fine. I don't know if they talked to them or if they talked to their parents, but it seems like they were monitoring their devices. <laughs> so, these children, literal children, spend an average of 80 minutes a day on TikTok compared to 85 minutes a day on YouTube. But they spend that, those amounts of time on both. So that's a total for anyone doing the math of 165 minutes a day, which is almost three hours, which is insane. If Gen Z is your audience, pay attention to TikTok, pay attention to YouTube. Are the Gen Z still being born? Like, is your baby Gen Z? I don't know. Are they done? No, they're done. Gen J. I think we're in Gen Y or something. No, they're done. Gen XY. 
Gen X Y Z. We should look this up. I need to know what baby. Gen A A. Like Excel. No. So here's what you should do. You should you should keep your kids away from Custodio. Keep them away from TikTok. Even yes. YouTube. Keep yeah. them away from all that. I my wife sent me this study about how you should be grounded with the earth. And it's like, you need to be barefoot with nature for 20 minutes and it grounds your body in the electricity. I, I didn't read that. it. I didn't read it, but I was like, okay. And I went out. You didn't read it. Hand. Don't retweet it, Greg. No, you'd get that little sign saying I didn't, <laughs> didn't read it. But so I'm like, all right, I'm going outside 20 minutes grounded with nature. That's what you should do. Get Quistodio on the blower. Stop saying Quistodio. <laughs> <laughs> oh speaking of grounded in nature linkedin let's talk about them for a minute how are they grounded in nature it's a technology site it's software for business people that's the opposite of nature jess i just wanted to get you fired up i had nothing to just carry on i didn't want to say next up again so they have confirmed they are they being linkedin have confirmed they're testing a new feature that social media today calls <laughs> quote, a new current status option, which would enable users to share what they're up to at any given time with a one-line summary. Can I tell you that nobody cares? I no care. Cares. I care, Hope. I want it because I just want to make my status at, at all times not on LinkedIn. Jess, I don't think you've been on LinkedIn in like five years. Hence, I need the status. Then people will stop trying to connect with me. It's oh. useful. The only status option is going to be crushing it. I think you haven't been on LinkedIn before you worked here. I think it's been like eight years. Probably. I went on once to share our uh, B2B asset for Cypress oh. North. because It's a perfect place to go. <laughs> that and Quistodio. That's where I'd go. Oh, last up here, another platform I'm not on except for stories, which Shep called me out on last week. Facebook has a new way of highlighting how a page manager's interaction with their page's posts can impact engagement, if it does, and reach compared to posts without a comment from said page manager. So that's good stuff. If you're putting a lot of time into interacting with your page's content and want to see if it actually has an impact, this is really useful. But it, it just says like, hey, you had this much more reach than a post that you didn't comment on. So it's not like super actionable, but it's just nice to know whether you're, you're helping at all by spending your time posting comments. Wee! I am not on LinkedIn. <laughs> And that brings us to our real life segment, straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for Working Hard or Hardly Working, where we talk about what's going on in our IRL work, good, bad, or otherwise. I will start this week. We have been getting this notification from Grammarly that says, this doc looks a bit long. Do you want Grammarly to check this document or are you just reading? It, it happens for literally Every single one of my documents, like, yeah, it's long. I wrote a long article. Can you please check? Like, are they lazy? I literally have it up for these prep notes right now. The only option you have is yes, check it. Yeah. Oh, no, this is a great show we're doing here. Like, or no. like dismiss, like, don't ask me this again. It doesn't, or you can open the same document twice and it asks you it again. And I'll just be like reading an article that I'm proofing for someone and I'm halfway through before I realize it's on. It's really dumb. I don't understand. I love Grammarly. I hate this. I'm with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love something. I love Screaming Frog. And for anyone that doesn't know what Screaming Frog is, it's a website crawling tool. We use it for all sorts of things around here, like creating site maps or auditing title tags, checking for GTM installation. There's like a million things you can do with it. This week in particular, though, I did something new. I used it to check for alt text on a site's images. So it's obviously a really tedious process to just go one by one manually and see if there is any. So with Screaming Frog, you can look at the actual alt text that's associated with an image just in a list form. So you can scroll through, which is nice, but you can also filter by all the images that don't have any and you can export a list of that. So alt text is really important for accessibility, especially. So if you're missing it on your images, it's not good. So I just found Screaming Frog to be hugely helpful yet again in a new way. Love it, working hard. Cool. And for me this week, it's a pandemic. Times are tough. I was at the mall and I saw this 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 kiosk with my five-year-olds, this Quistodio, and I just gave them my kids. And I said, <laughs> hey, kids, go tell these the, the, this guy in this trench coat about TikTok, yeah, Quistodio, and get some money. 
You were no. not at the mall, <laughs> were you? Also, no, it's mall the only can- things that aren't open. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this week, we talked about it a few weeks back about YouTube timestamps. And we have a weekly meeting here at Cypress North, our agency, and we talk about things that work well this week. I did it live, setting up timestamps on YouTube, and it is amazing. If you don't know what timestamps are, go to YouTube, type in search engine journal, and subscribe, but check out the marketing clock videos. And you can see, oh, this part is our main news. Here's our ICYMI, here's this. And you can make these little chapters, but it is so easy. And so many times you have these demos and you're like, oh, we're going to get to this part or you've got webinars. You can let people jump right through and on the timer on the bottom line, like right here, if you're watching on YouTube, you can jump forward or back and see the different chapters. You need to have three chapters. You need to start with zero, but it is very, very easy. Head on over to YouTube, look for Search Engine Journal and see it in action today. Now it's time for this week's WTH. Misguided. You're like, who does that? <laughs> Just get rid of it. I'm over it. <laughs> Where we rant, rave, and roll our eyes about our trending digital marketing topic. What are we coming to? Honestly. See what had us asking. W. T. H. This week. So we have a follow-up WTH this week. I don't know if we've ever done this before, but we have a follow-up from last week. So you may remember... Last week's story was a WTH about how MSN is replacing journalists to curate stories. They're all fired and they're just going to use robots instead. And that's got to be great. Jess knows a ton about the stock market and I'm imagining their stock market is through the roof. That has to be the follow-up for this, right, Sheb? No. (laughs) And specifically in the article, one of the things that they said the journalists do is find images for all the articles. Like apparently that's a big job. And I don't know if you guys listened to me last week, but I said this is the worst possible timing in the world to be replacing journalists with robots. Like there's a lot happening and it's not a good idea. Well, they didn't listen to me. And this week, MSM posted a story about Little Mix's Jade Thurwall. It's this terrible, well, it was well-written, but not a good story about the racism she experienced in school. And the image wasn't a picture of Jade. It was her bandmate, Leanne. They used the wrong image. They're Rude. idiots. Rude. So she posted it to her Instagram short story. And she said, if you're going to copy and paste articles from other accurate media outlets, you might want to make sure you're using an image of the correct, mi- the correct mixed race member of the group. Like this is such a bad look. They look so stupid and nobody listens to me. I say it all the time. No, and nobody wants robot news. No. Nobody wants no. robot news. Why? We don't need this. Maybe it's not too late and they can bring those journalists back. We but. should replace this show with robots. What could go wrong? It'd be great. Mm. Boop, beep, pop, pop, Quistodio. <laughs> we didn't say replace it with an acapella group, Greg. Right? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a terrible idea. But yeah, no. they should have listened to us. WTH. All right. Now on to our grab bag segment, the segment segments. And first up, we have Turn Down the Heat. Yes. This is yours, right? This is an ad campaign um, from LinkedIn. I saw it on Facebook as an ad and it just makes me so upset. Like it's really good graphics, but it's just so corny and so LinkedIn. And it's about the secret sauce of LinkedIn ads and what they do to turn up the heat. And it's just really dumb and I hate it. Everyone should watch it. It, the blue pepper just is uncomfortable. No, yeah, they're not good graphics. It's they're an ugly. ad for other advertisers, and it's just so corny and disrespectful. I hate it. The ratio on that is amazing. It's got almost 2 million views and 47 reactions. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and there'd be more reactions. if There would there'd be 1.8 million reactions if you could have a negative face. That's how stupid this ad is. Yeah. And I watched stupid. it at least twice. I hate it. I hate it. And I've seen it so many, so many times because Facebook doesn't have a frequency cap. And it just makes me so upset. All right. Next up is a segment, a groovy gig. A groovy gig is a segment. And Bryant Garvin, friend of the show, well, friend of friends, at Bryant Garvin on Twitter, is looking for a director or manager of paid media at Groove Life. And if you don't know what Groove Life is, they started making those silicone rings that are now into belts on Kickstarter. Fantastic Kickstarter campaign. I don't know if if you guys saw that. Great videos. I ordered one 
and he is looking to grow a team. Good pay, good benefits, 401k, insurance, blah, blah, blah. That's how you know it's good. When you blah, blah, blah through it, it's good. So check it out in the show notes if you are looking for a new gig. You have to be in the Nashville or Salt Lake City area, though. And then he says, join me together. We can rule the galaxy. And it's that person from Star Trek. Darth Vader from Star Trek. Yep, that's who I hope is going to pipe in and be angry. No, it's not Tana. Yep, (laughs) yep. What did you just say? (laughs) You know what I'm talking about. The live long prosper guy that doesn't like living long. Listen, Greg, I have the high ground. Just stop it. (laughs) Yeah, Jess is on my side. Somebody's on my side for once. I am. (laughs) Next up is a segment. Do you want more? Of course you don't. And it's about, (laughs) if you like this show right now, which, which is uh, a low probability. Um, you can see, I was just on Edge of the Web over with Aaron Sparks and Joshua over there with the gang over in Indianapolis. And we talked about the ups and downs of Google. And he's like, let's talk about the ups and downs. And I'm pretty sure it was all downs that I was talking about on the show, but it was awesome. They've got a fantastic setup over there. They've got a great podcast, a great YouTube channel. Check it out. It's Edge of the Web um, podcast form, YouTube form. We did two shows and it was really, really great. And I just ranted the whole time. I got yeah. all hot. But I didn't math. We're doing math. Yeah, I, that was like my worst nightmare. I cannot believe you opened yourself up to a, a live math question. Yeah, we that even talked great. about it, it in really the Slack good. chat. We were impressed. We had a right. live watch party. <laughs> and you talked one, about your knife making too, which is nice. I did. I did. I, and I've got knives around here somewhere. But at one point, it's really funny. You can watch it. Again, it's YouTube, Edge of the Web. Um, but I was trying to fix my glasses and it was flipped and I tried to fix my glasses from being really tilted and I fixed, I like made them like even way more tilted. It's really funny. But overall, it was great. Aaron did a fantastic job. And if you want to hear more ranting, go check it out on Edge of the Web. All right. And lastly, here's extra, extra spice served up for you. Each week we talk about it. Mark Salterelli from Cypress North here writes a recap of the show. And last week, I don't even know what it was. It was like number, it was number eight on his recap of like 17 things on the show. He says that he didn't say that Shit's Creek was good. He says, I love Shit's Creek. And I did have someone think my Facebook profile picture was actually Dan J. Levy. Levy? 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 Mark, Mark's going to mad at this. I'm going to make the, I'm going to make the recap with this. But he said, proud moment. And he's got a picture, a glam picture. And he does. He does sort of look like that. A little too dry, like a little too, little tie. I haven't seen a tie yet. I've only seen four episodes, but what? check it out. Yeah, I, I started watching the show called Alone, where they put these people in the Arctic and they just, you have 10 things you can bring. And it, Are they barefoot to be connected with nature? No, but they like Feet. kill rabbits oh. and vermin and swine and like wrap themselves around. <laughs> There's no swine in the Arctic, are there? I know. No, but some up. dude kills a moose. It's crazy. There's moose? What the oh, I'm thinking Antarctic. You're saying Arctic, North. Yeah, like Canada. Like Shit's Creek, Jess. Very oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's it for our segment segment this week. And now for this week's Cool Tool. As a reminder, our Cool Tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners and is really, really cool. This week's cool tool is the Serperator, not separator, Serperator from Mobile Moxie. This tool lets you see what Google search results look like on mobile in a specific geographic location. Super cool. You just select your location and you can pick a device. So like the iPhone 5 if you're feeling really nostalgic and then you can type in a search query and the Serperator populates the results in a preview right on the device that you selected. So you're not just seeing what's ranking but how it actually displays on your chosen device, which is really awesome. And you can use this up to five times a day for free. So if you want to check it out, and you should, just head on over to mobilemoxie.com slash tools slash mobile dash SERP dash test and check it out. Now it's time for our must read marketing article of the week. An article so advanced, so in depth, so detailed that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. And this week's must read marketing article of the week comes from Content King. And there is a fantastic article with lots and lots of thought leadership from Content King. And the topic was to do how to handle discontinued product without ruining your SEO. And they talk about what should be technically discontinued, like not out of stock stuff. 
how to keep track of discontinued products, some of the best practices for handling discontinued products, and they give you different resources as what to do. There's not like a one size fits all. They say, if this, then this, you may want to consider this. It's sort of like, it depends, but they give you the actual options to do. Um, they talk about the three things to keep in mind, some closing thoughts, and there's a lot of different takes on there, which is what I like the most. So I really love that. Check it out in the show notes from contentkingapp.com. And the name of the author was at the very bottom of the page. And I don't have the name. I don't have the name of the author. It's just Content King, the king of content. So go check it out. How to know work to marketing o'clock today. All right, that does it for today's show. Thank you to our fabulous sponsors, Ahrefs and Optio. It is now officially not Marketing O'Clock. And remember, you can catch everything from this show on marketingoclock.com. And while you're there, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And we will see you next week. Thanks for listening to Marketing O'Clock. If today's show was of value to you, please subscribe, leave a review, or share with a colleague. If you are looking for more information on today's topics, head over to marketingoclock.com for links to all the articles that we covered. Welcome to this week's Shoot in the Heck, where after our famous Friday news shows, we don't talk about marketing anymore. We just shoot the heck. And today it is time for everyone's favorite game. We haven't done this in a while. Two kinds of people. How do you play the game, Shep? Well, um, thanks for asking, Greg. In this game, you say there's two types of people and everyone says which type they are. Okay, Jess, you can go first. Oh, okay. Um, there's two kinds of people. There are people that are obsessed with having no notifications, like they clear their notifications, and then there's people that just deal with it and have tons of them everywhere. I definitely deal with it. No, I need to clear all my notifications. It bugs me so much. I check my phone 20 times a day. I have OCD, I'm psychotic, but like even on Andrew's phone, if he has notifications on his phone, I'm like, why, why? Just look at your messages. See, I'm, I, I'm, I am one kind of person. I'm not going to say there's a middle ground. I delete notifications, but because I know there's notifications happening, and a lot of times it's just, hey, there's a minor change here, there, and know what it is, I won't look at my phone. So I won't look at my phone, so I don't have to acknowledge notifications and clear them. So I am a delete notifications person. All right. I just let mine pile up. I, I tweeted about it once. Yeah, me and Chris Pratt. You, like, caused controversy. You broke the internet with that, too. No, I was really happy. I actually got some engagement. It was a hot topic. People were excited. What is, your inbox use Twitter. Right now? what is your mail inbox right now? It's going to make me so mad. Do you guys want to guess a number? Do an over-under? It has to be in the thousands. Oh, for sure. 10, 10 I'll go 12,000. Your work email? 15,000. No. 15, 106,458. Oh my god. Yes. And I have yes. 13 text messages. <laughs> Greg fell down. Yes. <laughs> That's bad. I All love right. it. it. Brings me joy. <sighs> okay, Greg, you're next. Okay, so I'm next. So there's two kinds of people. People that like a shandy beer and people that don't. A shandy beer is like beer lemonade. Okay, so I like a shandy, and it's like the only kind of beer I like. Now I like, um, are the ruby red grapefruits everywhere, or is it just here? The Genesee beer? So, yeah, that's everywhere. Pretty sure it's just around Western oh. New York. Those are all right, but that's the only kind of beer I like in a shandy. Yes. Oh, so you don't even like the lemon ones, Chop? You just like the grapefruit? No, I like a lemon one. Oh. Okay. But I'm saying. Yeah, I like them too. Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah. I hate beer. <laughs> well, I'm, with hope. I'm with hope on this like i want beer or give me like a mike's hard lemonade or a, a mike's hard lemonade no. oh give me something i, mean, I haven't I drank those since high beer. school you know what i like i like beer and i lemonade but i don't like beer lemonade i like yeah, a nice cider that. mike's hard lemonade though get out of here do you know well, i don't drink i've drank that- drink a mike's hard lemonade since i was 18 but i still i'd re- I pick a mike hard, mike's hard lemonade over a shandy it's no. like this lemonade this sweet thing and it smells like rancid beer no thanks i Get will say it's kind of like less bang for your buck like if you can't drink a lot it's great but like 
if you're not driving, it's like less alcohol for the same price. Trulies. Give me a truly or something. Or no, a Mike's I Harder. Lemon beer. Lemon a Mike's beer. Harder. That's a thing. They're like 12% and they come yeah. in these huge cans. I know. No thanks. One ounce for every year Greg was the last time he drank one. Oh. Okay, so I was out on, out on a walk with Andrew and there was a bug on him, like on his arm. And I like squished it on his arm and he was like, what is wrong with you? And That's I was weird. like, I killed yeah. the bug. And he's like, you swat the bug off of you. You don't like squish it on you. And I was like, oh no, like I need to see that the bug is dead. Like, on oh, me. that's like, I, disgusting. Yeah, I need you're to the see only the person. Jess is going to call PETA, first of all. <laughs> that, you, you don't that's squash just the gross. bug. And yeah, someone, I always I'm getting, squash it. I'm going to call Custodia on you. You don't do that. <laughs> I can't even squish a bug no. on the floor because I don't want to feel it. And you did it with your bare hand? Yeah, what's what's wrong with you? you? It's a mosquito. You're on a walk. What are you going to do? You're going to swat it away and it's going to fly right back at you. It's like, got other people's blood and you squished it. I need to see it dead. Like mosquitoes are just, you're, 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 you're a psycho. <laughs> you're a psycho. Your mosquitoes aren't even in your house. Like you're on a walk no, outside. Have you ever watched a mosquito like take blood from you? Like sometimes I'll sit there and I'll no. watch the mosquito take blood for a few seconds. Why would I'll you do it. that? And then oh. I'll kill it. That mosquito is just trying to feed its young. It is doing its job. You what scoot it off, to... move trying on. Trying to bring back the dinosaurs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Oh. That's not how Jurassic Shep. Park Save works. us, Shep. Hope I'm concerned for you. Okay, two types of people. When you have like French fries or um, tater tots or some kind of fr- potato, do you put your dipping sauce on top or do you dip? You could also be like chicken nuggets. My French fries. Do you like squirt your ketchup on top? First of all, ketchup's disgusting. No. That's another conversation. I'm it's with you. Chick-fil-A that. sauce. I'm not a psychopath. Yeah, you need a fork at that point. Oh, a lot of people do it. It's nasty. No, it's disgusting. Mm-hmm. You need you need to you need to look deep inside yourself. So we all agree that we're dippers. Yes, that's dippers. the point of the sauce container is to take the chicken nugget out of its container and dip it into the dipping sauce container. Well, that's half the fun. That's Chick-fil-A. American food. The Chick-fil-A boxes now say to dip or not to dip. So like, it's not me. I didn't make this up. I'm, like, I'm not saying you, you are. I'm dip, saying you're that- eating it plain. I'm triggered. You're not drizzling. That's I was no. worried about There's hope. There's out there. I was worried about hope after that mosquito comment. <laughs> now I feel better. I feel I better. I say I was one. Okay, well, we're all in agreement and we will see you next week.